Hey guys, Paul here. So today I wanted to talk about the Dragon Rulers and why I feel that these cards could come off the ban list. Now I know this isn't any particularly hot take, and honestly it kind of gets discussed like at least once every couple of months by people. But yeah, the Dragon Rulers are a pretty infamous set of monsters, and three of the four of them have been banned since 2015. We're gonna go over them and why I think they can come back, and you know, you guys can, you know, fight me in the comments with why you think they shouldn't, or what would, you know, maybe they would break. But, uh, yeah, let's just get right into it. So, um, this is Blaster, this is Tidal, this is Redox, and this is Tempest, who you might already be a little bit familiar with. So, what do the Dragon Rollers all have in common? They're all level 7 dragons, so that's, you know, just kind of a relevant thing. They can, you know, be used with, say, Sacred Sword of the Seven Stars, or, you know, anything else that has to do with level 7s. They're dragon monsters, which are notoriously pretty OP in Yu-Gi-Oh!, um, I know that Dragon Link is going to be the probably most often mentioned thing in the comments, and I do have my thoughts on how these monsters would fit into a deck like that, and why I still think it probably wouldn't be too bad. And they all have a number of different effects. So, um, we'll just take, like, I don't know, let's say Blaster, for example. Uh, so yeah, if it's in your hand or grave, you can banish a total of two fire and or dragon monsters from your hand or and or grave, except this card, and special summon this card. So they're all like this with their specific attribute. So like titles like this with water and, um, you know, redox is like it with earth, so on. So yeah, it means that these cards can get summoned from your hand or graveyard quite easily, kind of like a chaos sorcerer, blacklister soldier type of effect. Um, the fact that you can banish either two dragons or two fires or like a mix to summon blaster, for instance, gives them a lot of versatility. It means that blaster could be used in a fire centric deck like, you know, Salamangrates, for instance or Fire Fists, but also could just be used in a Dragon-based deck, or a mix, so that's really fun. Um, also, during your opponent's end phase, if this card was Special Summoned, it gets returned to the hand. They all also share this effect, so it means that these guys aren't going to be lasting on the field for super long, even though Tidal is very strong and has like a lot of attack points, the fact of the matter is it'll only really be a threat on the field for a little while. And then it'll come back to your hand, at which point you could maybe summon it again on your next turn, but that would mean more like banishing to do, if your deck is able to do it. Now, they also each have an effect that you can use by discarding them and then another monster of their same attribute. In the case of Blaster, that is, you can discard this and a fire monster from your hand and you get to target a card on the field and destroy it. So it's a pretty strong removal ignition effect. And um, they all have something like that. So for instance, with Tidal, you can discard it and a water monster to send a monster from your deck to your graveyard, kind of like a foolish burial. With Redox, you can discard it and an Earth monster to the grave and then target a monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So it's like Monster Reborn. And then finally, this Tempest, you can discard it and a Wind monster to add a Dragon-type monster from your deck to your hand. So it's sort of like a search effect. Alright, continuing onwards, there's one last effect. If this card is banished, you can add a Fire Dragon-type monster from your deck to your hand. And they also each share that. So if Tidal is banished, you can add a water dragon monster from your deck to your hand, so on and so forth. Now, in their prime, these were used to search for either, you know, another copy of themselves or also one of their baby forms, which aren't really going to be super relevant to the discussion right now. But yeah, so they all have that. Um, yeah, it's a lot of effects, but it's all kind of balanced by the fact that you can only use one Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms effect per turn and only once that turn. And they all have that hard once per turn applied to them. So it means that, like, on the same turn that you summon one of them, you can't also, like, search with them. Or the same turn that you discard to get, like, you know, one of their effects, it means you can't summon them also. So, despite the fact that they're quite strong and were very strong in their prime, I think that in today's kind of form of Yu-Gi-Oh!, the fact that you have to, like, pick and choose one of these effects means that them having four different effects does not make them altogether that strong. So, Tempest Dragon Ruler of Storms is the one that's already legal, so I'm going to kind of quickly talk about it first. Um... Artwork's incredible, by the way. Not totally related, but, you know, whatever. Okay, so this is oftentimes used in win-based strategies, most notably Dragoonity. I think, like, one Dragoonity deck actually managed to get, like, top 32 at some remote uh, event, some remote regional or whatever, YCS, like, last year. So there's that. But, yeah, it can be used in Dragoonity. It can be used in, like, Armed Dragon. I've even seen it used a little bit in, like, a Harpy deck. And it's really nice. So it can be a really useful search card. Like if you want to use Gold Sarcophagus, for instance, you could banish this from your deck and that could be a way to get one of your Arm Dragon or Dragoonity monsters just straight to your hand. And also it can be a free material to like use for Xyz summons or just material to like link with. That's kind of what comes to mind for most people with Dragon Link is that these monsters can be summoned 
rather easily and like each turn they can sort of be a free material to use and that might be why they're troublesome or problematic the thing is tempest is at one and it doesn't actually see a whole lot of play in dragon rulers which surprises me yes you can use it by like discarding it and a wind monster to add a dragon type monster from your deck to your hand which sounds like that would be insane in dragon rulers or not dragon rulers but sorry dragon link the ability to search like any dragon you want seems like that would be just too much but the fact that you have to discard another wind monster alongside Tempest and Dragon Link doesn't actually run really very many like wind monsters means that this doesn't really come up a whole lot. So yeah, um, this card seems fine. Now we're going to talk about each of the other individual ones, probably from least to potentially most problematic and why I feel that they're still all together fine. Now Blaster, his effect is the one where you get to discard him and a fire monster to pop a card. This is an ignition effect, so it's not like a quick effect thing that you can just use, um, like, immediately in your opponent's turn to disrupt them. But it's a form of removal that could be really useful for fire decks. Like I mentioned before, Salamangrate comes to mind as a really strong use, like, could have a strong use for this card. Fire Fists, um, there's other fire, like, attribute decks, I'm sure I'm forgetting something really obvious, but... Yeah, so with that, they could have a removal thing. This isn't, to me, like, anything super crazy in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! The ability to, like, get rid of one card on your own main phase by discarding, like, this and something else. It's technically a neg one, so eh. Now, summoning it out as, like, link material, that's a nice thing. You know, I'm sure Salamangrates might not complain too much about that. Uh, certain decks these days sort of, like, lock you into a certain attribute or type, though, so that might not even be entirely relevant for some. Uh, and it's 2800, so it's a beat stick, sure. Uh, it's sort of like a boss monster in that way, but it doesn't actually have any protections while it's in the field. It can't negate anything, and it can't protect itself, and it can come back on the next turn. So, yeah. Now, if you banish it with, say, Gold Sarcophagus from your deck, you can get a Fire Dragon-type monster from your deck to your hand. I don't really know that anything comes to mind. Like, this super-duper relevant today. Maybe somebody can correct me in the comments. But I don't think that its search effect will be, like, overtly useful. And um, also, and this also applies to all the Dragon Rulers, this card itself is not really easily searchable. So, um, you know, like, having one copy, because I'm assuming these cards will be limited to one, having one copy of this just doesn't seem like it would be too bad. If there was any Dragon Ruler that would be most likely to come off the list first, um, besides, you know, Tempest, who's already off, it would probably be Blaster. Okay, so now there's Tidal. Tidal is a little bit more troublesome, so you can pitch it and a water monster to send a monster from your deck to your grave. That emulates Foolish Burial, which obviously is limited to one because that's quite strong. This, in its heyday, was used a lot with Mermail Atlanteans because um, if you were pitching this alongside an Atlantean, then that would trigger the Atlantean effects like Dragoons, for instance, or Neptibus, maybe would be like a newer example. It wasn't really around at the same time, but... Yeah, and also this could work really well with the new Deep Sea archetype that's been out for a couple years now. So, being able to pit something to Grave is a good setup, but it is still like a neg 2. Like, you're losing 2 cards, and even if the Atlantean card kind of, you know, returns some card advantage for you, I don't think this would be, like, really all too bad. The, like, Atlantean Mermail deck doesn't even see really much play i mean there are people who use it and it can even do some like kind of neat hand loops and stuff but it doesn't really get much competitive play in the tournament scene and i don't think the title would be like a, a night and day change for them it would be one useful tool but again this card's barely searchable and if it was one i just don't know that i don't know that it would be much of a problem um so this would probably be the next dragon ruler that i would take off the list after blaster okay finally dragon ruler of boulders redox so, he's probably the one that scares people the most because this is a um, Earth monster, first of all, which Earth, like, is a little bit more common as, like, an a, a exploitable type. Fire, water, and wind, not as much so. There are plenty of decks, engines, like, archetypes, staple monsters and stuff that happen to be Earth that could synergize pretty well with this. And his effect is a Monster Reborn. And we know that Monster Reborn is pretty strong. Now, also, Monster Reborn is legal, and people only play it sometimes. But um, the fact that this could, like, get monsters back could be a little scary. As for primarily Earth-based decks right now, like... Eh, Medolce comes to mind. Everything else these days feels like it's just kind of a mix of, like, attributes and stuff. So I don't know that anything would abuse it specifically. Um, 
Gym Knights are getting some more support soon. Maybe they could find a, a pretty good use for this as like an extra free like Monster Reborn. But again, it's not searchable, and so that kind of is relevant. Um, relevant as in like a point of why I think it wouldn't be all too bad. Um, another thing with all of these monsters being legal at one time is that they kind of can form something of an engine together. Like, you know, banishing, say, Tidal to summon Tempest means that Tempest can come back and then Tidal also gets like a search. And so like as an engine, they do work together quite well. But I think that if they're all at one, then that synergy gets cut down by quite a bit. And then the last issue we have to address is just Dragon Link, which I, believe it or not, don't know that it would use these all that heavily. Like, I could see Tidal and Redox probably having some use here. But again, it's tough to fulfill, like, the discard effect costs because you need to have, like, another Earth monster with Redox. And Dragon Link is mostly dark dragon monsters. And then same with Tidal. It needs, like, a water monster in itself. And these aren't searchable. Um, it, it just... I don't really know. Uh, feels tough. Maybe there's, like, something with Omni Dragon Brotar. I don't know. So, I... All in all, I just feel like these monsters are strong, and I know that they have like a history in Yu-Gi-Oh, and a lot of people fear them for that, but I don't really think that in today's game, these would be anything game-changing. Let me know down in the comments if you think I'm wrong. I would love to hear it, because, you know, I and here's one last thing I'll say about it, too. I think that they probably don't need to all come out with the ban list, like, together at once. I see why that would be a little bit scary and, like, risky on Konami's part. But maybe, like, start with Blaster first, because I think he's the least problematic. And then maybe go Tidal and then go Redox. And, you know, and that's if they're proving to not be super problematic, they can each come off. And also, this is just to one, not to, like, three. So, yeah, keep that in mind. All right, that's going to be it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you guys in the next one. Best turn.